Merry Christmas. I'm glad you're here to worship with us. St. Columbus is a church on a mission to live God's love. We carry out this mission in many and varied ways. We're committed to learning basic Christian practices of Bible reading and prayer. We take care of those going through hard times with a vibrant network of small groups for conversation, prayer, and fellowship. Our Father's Group, Mother's Group, LGBTQ Fellowship, the 42nd Street Fellowship for Singles. These are among the ways that we connect and support, especially important during this pandemic. St. Columba's commitment to care for the environment through a zero waste policy, to become an anti-racist church, and to partner with others to end family homelessness in the District of Columbia. These reflect our heart for social justice as we strive toward God's beloved community. Nourishing children and their families, that's at the heart of our life together with special We Worship for Children, our youth group, our Sunday school, and for the beauty and for the joy of it all, our choirs for all ages, lifting our voices and hearts to God. So whether you're with us for the first time or the umpteenth time, we'd love to connect and help you take your next step toward life with Christ. My deep thanks to each of you for your generosity in support of the mission and ministry of St. Columbus. The world needs the love we share as the body of Christ. Learn more about opportunities to live God's love or make your gift at columba.org. And now let's celebrate Christmas together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord, this will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a, a multitude, multitude of, of the, the heavenly hosts, hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them, and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord.
Merry Christmas. I am so glad to be with you to celebrate. I have never, I have never felt more grateful than I do right now to join you in this feast of the Nativity. As the angel announced to the shepherds long ago and our gospel readers just poured out for us, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people, to you, to you, to us, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. I think I feel such joy because this is the news that our souls long to hear. It's been a hard year. As if our personal and collective shadows have been laid bare, the underbelly exposed for months on end, the long festering divisions of race, caste, and economic access, and our participation and perpetuation therein make plain our smallness, shot through with a fearsome global disease and our own particular personal hardships. From whence is our help to come, cried the psalmist. Well, our help Our help comes from God, from love, God's love. Christmas during a pandemic. Dr. Teresa Thayer Snyder, a New York State Public School superintendent, recently posted a letter. I am writing today about the children of this pandemic. She notes with alarm those educators who think their students will need to catch up after a lost year. What on earth are we trying to catch them up on, she asks. When the children return to school, they will have returned with a new history that we will need to help them identify and make sense of. When the children return to school, we will need to listen to them. They have endured a year that has no parallel in modern times. Their brains may not have been focused on traditional school material, but they did not stop either. Their brains may have been focused on where their next meal is coming from, or how to care for a younger sibling, or how to deal with missing grandma, or how it feels to have to surrender a beloved pet, to be cut off from friends, to watch plans vanish, or how to deal with death. And our job is to help them write that history. To resist those who are in a hurry to fix kids and make up for the lost time. The time was not lost. It was invested in surviving. The children do not need to be fixed. They are not broken. They need to be heard. They need to be given as many tools as we can provide to nurture resilience and help them make sense of a post-pandemic world. So greet them with art supplies and writing materials and music and dance and so many other avenues to help them express what has happened to them in their lives during this horrific year. Greet them with stories and books that will help them make sense of an upside-down world." End quote. This time was not lost, but our lives were not lived as we'd anticipated. So greet them with stories. The children are not the only ones who would do well to engage such exploration and integration. We each, we all, have some deep heart work, soul work to do. Long ago, before we had diagnoses for our various neuroses, people nonetheless recognized when they were out of sorts with their soul, that something deep inside was amiss, a sense of alienation from one's mythic roots. When this happened, the shaman would frequently chant the creation stories and the foundation myths of the tribe so as to reconnect the lost soul to its roots, its archetypal rhythms. And this is why I am so glad to celebrate Christmas with you. For in like fashion, we gather each year to chant the story of how God's love was born, 
made flesh and dwelt and still dwells among us. We may come to terms with our smallness, helplessness, and broken parts if through it we are able to connect our little stories to great love. For the time being, we need not solve the riddles or get everything sorted out. Our task at the moment is to dwell in the story, listen to its song, delight in its colors, and fill in some more, invite the spirit to weave the threads of our lives into the warp and weft of God's salvation. I dare say a very few of us is able to follow our own familiar Christmas traditions this year. So celebrate in a new way, just this once. Read aloud the first two chapters of Luke's Gospel. Read the first chapter of John's Gospel. Hear the good news that God is incarnate and dwells among us. Let this story take up residence in the imagination of our hearts. Christmas begins the story of how Jesus came to live among us as God's love. When the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot even comprehend it, there's God in seven pounds of human flesh awaiting our embrace emanating love. As Jesus is God's love incarnate, our life is to love. We are alive to love. So each morning when we wake, we can set an intention to love. And each evening, we can reflect on ways we were open to receive love and to love others. For yes, I am with you always, says our God, even to the end of the ages. In Luke's telling of the story, with a decree from Emperor Augustus while Quirinius was governor, it's not historically accurate. But that's not important. The point is that God's love is incarnate in specific times among particular people, through a young maiden in Bethlehem with shepherds. The point is not that God's love is some big ethereal truth, although surely it is that. The point is that God's love is manifest in the particulars through God's beloved, which is me and you. If you read through the Gospels, you'll find that a lot of what Jesus revealed to us came through mundane, basic flesh and blood interactions. In the way he was heading somewhere and stopped what he was doing to notice a beggar and listen to him. In the way he reached out and touched people who were dirty, literally, with open sores, people that others feared and shunned. He used mud, spit, to give sight to a blind man. In a moment of foolish conviction, put his own body between the angry crowds throwing stones and a woman no more sinful than any of the rest of us. Naturally, he wept when his friend died. It wasn't always pretty. Jesus got really angry with those who perpetuated injustice. He got close to the ickiest people. He crossed social taboos. And he gave people choices to be themselves, to walk away. He was never coercive. Irresistible, maybe. He asked for nothing less than everything. Complete sacrifice to love with all our heart, soul, and strength. And Jesus prayed to God for wisdom and strength himself. He didn't always know what to do or feel full of courage. Even so, he always followed the prompting of love coursing through his body and soul. So he ate supper with the tax collector who repented and gave away his wealth. He washed the feet of his friends, forgave them when they betrayed him. He loved the Roman centurion in the flesh each day. Jesus was God's love. So that in the flesh each day we might live God's love. Some days we fall short and bungle it. It's okay. Because every time we fall short is a perfect occasion to reaffirm our intention. This is pure gift. 
The time is not lost, and we are not broken. Chant the story once more. Avail yourself of the ways that God is telling you of God's love and your place in the world. Listen to the birds. See the changing light in the night sky. Forgive someone. Hug someone. Start afresh. I am alive to love. How does our story become God's story and God's story become our own? Just like this. Just like this. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. This is the peace that surpasses understanding. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. In this season of hope and joy, we bring our prayers before God with confidence and faith, saying, Holy Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church, for the Diocese of Washington, and for the Anglican Communion. Holy Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in authority throughout the world especially our mayor and city council, the president, the Congress, and the Supreme Court. Holy Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those for whom our prayers have been requested. For Michael, Colton, Lisa and Chuck, Mark, Stephen, Marty, Mary Agazio, John Benick, Alexander Del Vecchio, Rick Dowd, Mary Pat Jones, Jack Kuiper, Jane Lincoln, Vi Lund, Donna Wilson, Chris Luckett, the May family, Ralph and the whole Cunningham family, and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. Holy Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We pray for the gifts you have given us, especially for the hardworking choir members who provided beautiful music for our Christmas service, for the Flower Guild and their inspired decorating of the nave this year, and for all the communities 
and the imagination it takes to stay connected in this time of pandemic and find new ways to welcome and celebrate the birth of Jesus and for those blessings we name now, either silently or aloud. Holy Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died and for their families, especially for Joan Cunningham, Anne Crayley, and Charles Mackenzie, and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. We pray that the God of hope would console and bless them. Holy Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. Grants, we pray, Almighty God, that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith, which illumines our minds, may also shine through in our deeds. Through the grace of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
May Almighty God, who sent the Christ child to scatter the darkness of the world, brighten your hearts with the joy of holy presence. May the same God who sent angels to proclaim peace at the birth of a lowly child speak peace into your life. May God embolden you to be messengers of a new kingdom of hope, mercy, and justice. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you this day and forever. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the birth of the Christ child. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.